Is this working? Yes. Okay, so we are going to take 45 minutes and uh, I'm going to call on stage several very interesting people because they have a weird DNA. So I'm going to call somebody that was the CEO of a company, he sold the company to Apple and now he's working for the French government, which is bizarre, but that's Philippe. I'm going to call somebody who was an entrepreneur, then became a VC, now is an entrepreneur again, and uh, he's moving from the dark side to the light side, I'm not sure what's where, and that the Yal, and I'm going to call an entrepreneur, that's Shaul. And uh, we're gonna have several rules. One, we have 45 minutes. So rule number one is, for the first 35 minutes, we will not lie, okay? We, we won't tell any lie, and, and I promise Shaul that then, then we'll have 10 minutes of lie at the end. Um, so, you know, it's gonna be okay. Um, and uh, we'll try to have an interesting session, but it's very interesting because the key question is what has changed and what have we learned in terms of early stage funding? So let's start and let's see where this is taking us. So, and then we had another panelist, but uh, he played werewolf with Shaul and he died last night, so uh, he's not with us. So that's why there is only four of us. Um, the activities of uh, technology funding is not new. It was really invented in the uh, late 60s in Boston with actually the funding of digital corporation. And it's a very cyclical business. So I think for us, the question for debate are, what is new? You know, what has changed? What's working, what's not working? What is geographically specific in Israel versus Europe versus the US? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, what's working? And we're gonna go storytelling, so I'm interested in, uh, you know, the good, what you've seen that's working, the good thing that Pitango has been doing, the bad thing that you've seen VC, other VC doing, and the horrible things, you know, the ugly, that uh, you've witnessed. So, um, yeah, let's start with you. Um, so, so uh Add, add an introduction of it. Um, so in my background, I've been building uh, tech techno uh, companies in the last uh, decade or so, right after college. Um, some of them were uh, uh, PixCout, it was an image processing uh, company that we provided as a service to the stock photo industry. It ended up being acquired by Getty Images. Another company was a Pickup, which was a monetization tool for a publisher based on images, ended up being acquired by Wybrand Digital. And uh, lastly, uh, is a company we founded with uh, my wife and brother, uh, and the Gifts Project that ended up being acquired by uh, eBay. Um, been with uh, Pitango Ventures uh, for a while as a venture partner. It was an amazing experience to see how the dark side is not so dark and how the white side is not so bright. I um, have a lot of uh, insights from on that angle, if, uh, for those of you who will be interested. And uh, nowadays, uh, we recently started a new company uh, in the healthcare field called uh, Medic uh, Zebra Medical uh, Vision. We are trying to uh, create a platform for uh, researchers around uh, medical imaging to accelerate their research and write uh, faster algorithms in this field. So potentially. Uh, the next one billion people that are joining middle class worldwide will have uh, proper diagnosis tools. So this and you have raised money for your new venture? Um, yeah. You, are you we in are. the process of raising it or you have we, raised we money? We self-funded it so far and we are in the process of... Uh, so you have taken no external money so far for the new venture? Not yet. Okay. And why was that? No, we are, co we are currently working on in healthcare. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, bootstrap a uh, company or do uh, landing pages and A-B testing and uh, funnel traffic. In healthcare, it's longer cycles of development. Uh, there you have uh, regulatory approvals that are required. So uh, the lean startup thing uh, doesn't apply one-to-one -to, -one to all different verticals. I understand. Shaul. T tell us a bit about your company and have you raised money and how? Sure, so um, I'm uh, Shaul Olmert, co-founder and C works sort of, right? Can you hear me? Great. Uh, I'm Shaul Olmert, co-founder and CEO of Playbuzz. Playbuzz is an Israeli company that's been around for about two years. 
Uh, we have raised seed money. We've raised about uh, eight hundred thousand dollars when we just started, and uh, recently uh, closed an A round as well. And uh, you know the thing you, that intrigued you closed me most. The a round? Uh, we closed the A round. Yes. How large was that? Uh, Three million dollars. Uh, and you know I think the most intriguing part about uh, raising money for an early stage uh, venture, at least in Israel, is that uh, the investors are practically begging you to lie to them. Because uh, as experienced people, they know that when it comes to an early stage business, uh, you really have no idea how things will, will develop. You only know that you have a certain vision, a certain idea, you notice something that you want to investigate and develop and elaborate on. But uh, statistically, 100% of the startups have ended up doing something different than what they intended to. It could be slightly different, it could be completely different, but it will never be one-to-one. -one. And yet, you know, these fine gentlemen here, the uh, uh, former VCs, uh, or you know, even the angel investors, are asking you to prepare very detailed presentations and very detailed uh, uh, data sheets that are showing exactly how, you know, how much money will you pay a data engineer months per month, and exactly how many users are you going to have at you know, months 18, and how many of these users will click on more than one page, and all sorts of very, very detailed questions that at that point in time have nothing to do with reality. And see, even though they know that, they still expect you to go through that exercise. Now, as long as it's, you know, the effort of creating those materials is not a big deal, right? You can spend a couple of days creating those materials and then presenting them, that's fine. But sometimes those investors are actually expecting you to then, you know, deliver according to the plan. So you find yourself being a hostage to your own pre-planning and, you know, really directing all of your decisions based on this uh, pre-misconception rather than you know, looking around and asking yourself what works, what doesn't, what shall I do now, what shall I try now, how do I uh, divert what I do based on uh, actual reality. So Mark said that the rule for this uh, panel is that we're not going to lie for 35 minutes. I'm telling you that's not a good strategy if you want to raise money. So you should lie to them and then you should make sure that legally they have no way to fire you. That's what you say. Uh, I think I'll uh, offer a bit of a different strategy. I think that uh, you need to find early stage investors who subscribe to your vision and to your you know, own abilities and personality in a way that they realize that you are generally in a market that needs help, a market that has an opportunity. You are generally a person that's showing very high commitment, uh, very uh, close familiarity with the shape of the market right now, and a lot of passion and enthusiasm, and the rest is TBD. If they, you know, if they subscribe to that and you know, they have realistic expectations that with the money they gave you, you'll be able to find your direction and they will support you in your quest to find the direction, I think it's a good deal. Otherwise, they will give you money, but then you know, it's more or less a one-way ticket to, um, I don't know, to drive straight into a wall because you're practically uh, having to execute on a strategy that nobody, including you that created it, believes in. Okay. Last question before we move to Philippe. And are you finding in Israel that there is too much or too little early stage money? Too much or too little angels? Uh, until a few years ago, there was almost none. There were very few, you know, you could really count them. Um, uh, there were like 10 early stage investors in Israel. Everybody knew them and they had a very busy uh, schedule. So it was hard to get on their, uh, uh, on their calendar. Uh, in the past few years, noticing this gap, there has been a couple of emerging solutions. I mean, A, a lot of people who made money in the tech industry and decided to give back and be involved as angel investors. Uh, B, a lot of um, uh, incubators slash accelerators and all kinds of uh, weird programs, which you know, I, I guess we'll elaborate on separately and, uh, and talk about those. And uh, another thing that happened is that uh, at least in the internet slash mobile slash media consumers uh, sector, it has become pretty apparent that with very little money, technology is very accessible, and with very little funding, you can achieve a pretty significant milestone. So the funding needs of companies in this sector, as opposed to life sciences and other sectors, uh, have made it more accessible to raise more money in an easier way. Or not to raise more money, but to raise the money you need in an easier and faster way. Now, so there is the media company, there is the health company. Philip, you've been involved in trying to do early stage funding for hardware companies. Uh, yeah, so that's a perfect introduction. I understood from your introduction that uh, AL would be the good, that uh, show would be the bad, and so I'm supposed to be the ugly. Um, it's because you're from the government. Absolutely. 
Uh, no, the, the, so the situation I'm, I'm going to describe now is, is very peculiar to the French uh, funding ecosystem and probably relates to French culture. Um, it turns out that we have extremely talented entrepreneurs, I, as most of you know. Uh, we've had lots of successes and most recently we came back on NASDAQ with Criteo, so that, that is known by everybody. But most of the focus across the past 10 years has been on software, web, uh, ad, uh, ad tech. So very, very software, very, very high in the layers. Um, and we've tended to leave aside hardware, probably because we have uh, a deep cultural problem with it. And uh, so we are facing situations, for instance, uh, where companies that are that have this reputation in the United States to be just the best in class are totally unknown in the French landscape and people don't understand what, what, what we're dealing about. Has anybody in the room heard about open compute? Raise your hand. You should have a look. Open compute is to hardware what the Free Software Foundation was to software 10 years ago and giving birth to most of the software infrastructure in the internet, including Linux, Apache, uh, My MySQL, and PHP, uh, the same thing is happening right now in hardware and server design. It's, an, uh, it's a, uh, an open source effort led by giants such as Facebook and Microsoft, and where everybody can play and where you are judged by the quality of your contributions, not by the size of your portfolio or by the, um, the size of your team. And it turns out that we have in France this wonderful company called Splitted Desktop Systems that, again, nobody knows about in France and nobody gives a damn shit. And I'm blunt. I'm supposed, as a civil servant, to have some reservation and, you know, and not to tell things to, all of the record, to straight. Opinion. I know it's all of, off the record. And I came to the conclusion that we have an issue here uh, and that if we continue managing seed funding and managing early stage funding by committees, which is something we love to do in France, then we will miss not only opportunities, but elephants in the room. And my claim here is that Open Compute and this French company here is an elephant in the room. Uh, I'm not worried for them. As, as a civil servant, I, I would be supposed to fight for you know, uh, employment and fight to avoid talented engineers to be laid off. I don't have any worry about those. I know that these guys, if we can't help them, will be in the United States by the end of this year. Um, so that's, that's the ugly part of the story. Okay, so this is interesting. Does that mean that, obviously, investment is a fashion business and it's a cyclical business. So does that mean that it is today possible and easy to early stage fund media project? It's mediumly hard to fund health project and it's almost impossible to fund hardware project? Sort of, and probably because in some investors' minds, at least uh, on, on from the institutional investor point of view, software is something they don't understand, but they think it is light. They think it is uh, intangible. S in some cases, they have trouble because they, they find valuation skyrocketing, but at the end of the day, they know that software is something that you can change easily with a few, a few dozen of engineers, so you, you can manage software. On the other side, they, at least in France, we still see hardware as you know big industrial thing. Uh, we have this nightmare back 30 years ago of what we called le plan calcul, which was an attempt to uh, deploy uh, computing uh, across the industry and across France. And it failed miserably because it was just driven by the wrong angle. And, every, and everybody in France, most of the people I talk to are traumatized with that. And, have, and what the thing they have not understood is that in the hardware business, if you want to uh, run over the table, if you want to change the rules, you only need 20 people. It, it took two years and 20 very talented engineers for Facebook to revisit from the ground up the architecture of the data centers and to reach uh, energy efficiencies that have never been seen in the industry. Just 20 engineers. So let's go back to Israel. So is all the money floating to the capital super efficient type of project. And whereas 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Chromatis was a giant, hardcore, IP driven uh, startup. Now the next Chromatis is actually going to be a much smaller media play. And is it a good thing or a bad thing? Um, 
so, so I think if you look at it from a macro perspective, uh, uh, capital or cash is uh, being, uh, becoming a commodity. So be because of interest rates worldwide and many other reasons, uh, you have a lot of more cash and money available in many different hands. So you see all those new platforms for crowdfunding, whether it's for actual products, some of, some of it is for actual startups, some of it for, it's for small, bit, small medium businesses loans, some of it is for actual people in, instead of banks. So the, the cash is there and the technology is reducing the friction to get it. So you can subscribe your startup uh, to our crowd or your uh, Kickstarter project to Kickstarter and you can just, or Angelist and you can just get the cash. And in different industries, you will find investors that are more willing to take uh, risks or a moonshooting type of uh, uh, project. So they will, they already calculated the returns and how they uh, vary and they decided that if they will not make huge bet, they will not see uh, outstanding returns. So we, we don't see much of those type of invest, in investments still in Israel, uh, but uh, we believe uh, like anything else uh, Israel usually adopt what Silicon Valley does like two or three years later so we'll see it here as well. Mm. So it's interesting so if cash is a commodity what's the value of an incubator accelerator investment banking VC crowd because if cash is a commodity you go and talk to the people that have the cash you raise the money you bypass the guy in the middle who's going to take 20 percent of the value or five percent of the value a significant chunk that should go to the CEO. And his team. So it's, it's a gradual phenomenon, it's still not uh, binary. So uh, a few years ago, accelerators took 20% of the company. Now some of them are just giving everything for free just in order to get startup B in the accelerator. So they will give them uh, $60,000 worth of storage and office space and auditing and uh, law firm and they will not take any equity. Yeah, so yeah. You is, your, is your view that all those guys are going to be dead next year when we see each other again here? No, so some accelerators uh, perfected the business model of uh, getting a small chunk of the company and then sourcing good deals for uh, VCs that uh, benefit from uh, getting this uh, filterization mechanism because there are so many early stage startups over there, like almost 800 new ones every year just in Israel, which is like the size of the output from Europe. Mm. 